Happy Friday guys and welcome back to another episode of Bearham Engines. So first thing on the agenda this morning um, is to finish off the Land Rover Mark 1 block as in refacing and cutting the seats. So the guides are absolutely fine. All we've got to do is cut the four seats there in the block and um, the cylinder head is all done. As you can see the block is bored. But what we're doing here is we are just refacing the surface. But there is one problem with this. If I go around to the side, you can see the surface of the block compared to the base of the block is what they call on the piss, <laughs> an angle. So what we've had to do is obviously we've had to tilt the block over to get the, the block face at the right angle as so though we can um, reface it. So what we do, fortunately, the maximum height we've got on this machine between the bed and the cutter is 16 and a half inches and very fortunately from there to the surface is 16 so we've only got half inch to spare so what we do with a block like this is or a head like this is we we've got a flat edge on the back having removed the studs for the sump and we've got a flat edge on the back to sit it onto the bed we then put our little jacks under the front and we use our height gauge. This one here, so it's got an adjustable head up and down. We basically sit the height gauge on the bed and just touch it on each corner of each side and, until we get it level. So first of all, what we do is we get it sort of level that way, roughly. And then what you find sometimes, although that back edge is pretty straight, it's not gonna be 100% straight. Um, and sure enough, it was probably about 20 thou low on this side. So what we have to do is, see at the back there, we've got some shims there. So we've just put the shims in to lift the block up. Then we get our, our other direction correct and we clamp it down as best we can. So what we've done, it's a little bit of what I call Heath Robinson setup, but I've got a couple of clamps here to stop the block from sliding or moving any way that way. And then we clamp it down a sort of central really to the back edge and to these jacks as I can and that sort of ensures it's clamped down in the center. So we're only doing three thou cuts guys but you can see um, we've done six thou already so this is this will be nine thou now but as you can see it's cleaned up fully on both edges but in the center it sort of hasn't cleaned so that means that the, the block is a bit like that um, so it needed doing um, although we would have done it anyway because it's a recon. But yeah, bit of a rigmarole setting it up, guys. Probably about half hour's work setting it up, but needs to be done. Second on my agenda, we've got the 4.2 Jaguar cylinder head here. As you can see, we haven't really cleaned it up yet. Um, we've cleaned down the, down the inlet ports, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut all the seats first, which they're not bad. The guides are absolutely perfect in this head, so we don't need to do those. Um, we, we're not going to benefit at all by doing those. So I'm going to get this done today. Paul's not in now until Tuesday, maybe Wednesday. So hopefully if I can get this head done, set up, um, he has done, you see the holes there, he has done the clamp down kit. So we don't need to do that. So what I'll do is I'll cut the seats, I'll give it a blast and a paint, then I'll reface the top. Um, set the buckets up and then this cylinder head is all ready for Paul to stick on the block over there Right guys the kit car now we've been having a chat since we come back from Castle Coombe and Because obviously it's the first big circuit we've done and it is a particularly quick circuit Castle Coombe um, You've got the big sort of straight um, where you run up towards uh, Up towards quarry over the sort of over the crest there. I can't remember the names um, but the kit car, although it is pretty pokey and on a short circuit, it seems plenty pokey enough really. But we've been having a chat and it does seem to run out of puff. Definitely compared to the three caterums that were at Castle Coombe, it's not as quick. I mean, I'll be look, you'd be lucky if that now is 120 horsepower, I would say, because it's a you know, it's a 919 Fireblade engine, it's only 900cc, and it's probably not as much power as some of the modern 600s. Now, when we did the car up, we put the cage in, we were, 
I did um and ah about putting a more modern thousand in it, but to be honest with you, that old blade engine in that, it's part of the character of the car. You know, it's a fairly old chassis on the car. Um, we really like the noise of the bike engine on the carbs. So I've been wondering what to do, whether we should tune it. And you know, I said a, a while ago in one of our videos, we were, toy we were, we were chatting with a guy about a turbocharged um, Iabutzer engine. But we think that's way too much, you know. It's, it's not really what we want from the car. We just want a bit more oomph. So I've been, in, um, I've been in talks with a chap, you may have well have heard of him. His name's Jared Frost. Um, holds two or three land speed records, I think, on various bikes. Always been in the turbocharging bike engines game. Um, so I got chatting with Jared the other day and it turns out that we ended up talking about the super bikes and he knows a few people that I know and we, we ended up getting on all right um, and since then we've been messaging now Jared said that he can supply the full kit to turbocharge this and what that consists of is us sending here us us sending him our carburetors so what he would do is he would set those carburetors up um, with a aluminium plenum chamber on there he would then send us the kit, so it would be a turbocharger, exhaust manifold, obviously the plenum, carb setup, things like fuel pump, um, boost gauge, all the relevant bits really. All we would have to do when we get back, get it back, is fit the the head spacer to obviously lower the compression slightly. Um, we're not, we don't want to start building the motor. We don't want to go pistons, rods, all the rest of it. And he said at the moment, you're looking at a massive waiting list to get them. So we don't want that much more power, but he said minimum you're going to run with that on there. You can, you can run a minimum of sort of half a bar boost, but it'll be about 200 horsepower and 120 foot-pound of torque, which is probably 50, 60 foot-pound of torque more than it is now. It'll almost be twice as powerful and twice as much torque. So we're thinking of doing that, guys. Really appreciate if you put down in the comments below what you think, get your advice, but... I'm thinking now, really happy with the chassis. We're going to get some, um, another set of wheels with some, some semi-slicks on there and um, maybe turbocharge it. So I think it quite, would be quite good fun, good fun for the channel and um, definitely liven up the car. So yeah, let us know what you think on that, guys. So guys, I am just refacing a stepped flywheel. Now, when I say stepped flywheel, what I mean is, rather than it just being a constant face all the way along, it's got a step at the top, so the clutch bolts onto the top there, where the, um, on the outer step, and then the clutch plate goes on the inside. Now the only problem you've got with facing one of these, is you need to take off exactly what you do off the inside face, you need to take off the outside face. Otherwise, you end up with more of a gap um, where the plate goes. So, you normally find that these step flywheels are usually a little bit more worn than the, than the, the straight ones for some reason. Um, so, this cut that we're doing here is will be 60 thou. I do 20 thou cuts just to get underneath the hard spots. So, we're going to have to come, providing this is all right, we're going to have to come forward and take 60 thou off this eight outer face. Um, the customer then needs to go away and just check, like I've said to you before, when the clutch plate's on, it doesn't foul the bolt heads um, that, that make the flywheel to the crankshaft. So that's the only limiting factor. But by the looks of this so far, if we stop the machine. You can see on that face now, there's no hard spots. Um, if there was a hard spot on there, you would see like a, maybe a darker spot there. Um, but that looks absolutely fine. So we're just gonna bring it forward now. So we wind this cross slide back. Bring the tool back. What I'll do is I'll wind the, the bed forward and the cross slide we will Put on zero, and then we'll move the whole lot over. The whole lot over. 
so it just touches on there. Then we can lock that slide off, put a 20 thou cut on, lock this cross slide, pull up the handle to, for the feed, and that's 20 thou. So two more of those after that, and we're away. Right guys, so update on the Lamborghini. Excellent news, we have had the car back. The car is now at home, safe and sound. The reason I got it back really, I think, was more so because the guy that was dealing with my car went, I don't know whether he was after sales or what, but he went on holiday, left it with a colleague of his. He then, he sort of seen that I'd paid the bill um, and released the car and one of the drivers bought it back on Wednesday. So that's great news. Just to recap, the whole point of the sort of argument with Lamborghini was really just to get a, I just wanted a, a sort of a structure of the service plan really. I wanted to know what the hourly rate, hourly rate was going to be. I wanted to know what the hours was gonna be. I wanted to know where we were with the servicing of the car, what had been done and what was gonna be done very very vague from their behalf they couldn't seem to tell me um even the even the, the hourly rate ranged quite a lot from last year i mean usually it goes up but last year it seemed to be 30 pound an hour more so it weren't particularly the hourly rate that i was bothered about it was the number of hours um and as i say until they actually got the car up there and half got it done or at least got it checked out they they didn't come up with any plan whatsoever they didn't even know what needed to be done or what what was done also, the parts were only listed as a service pack um, and they, it took them a while to sort of explain what was in it and what they were going to be using in it. But the whole reason for, was, for me was just to have some history with the car as to what was done and so I could plan the service in and, you know, not, I just wanted to know what needed to be done and they couldn't seem to tell me that. So as far as the, um, the data protection um, for the email, I mean, Two or three of you guys, I do notice in the comments, um, suggested that it's just standard protocol. They just want to know that the, the, that the data is not going to go any further, which is absolutely fair enough. Um, but as I say, if they were using that as a sort of tool to hold my car back, you know, hold to ransom as such, then, yeah, I don't think that was right. Uh, so, yeah, I'm obviously not going to, yeah, I'm not going to move that data forward. But, yeah, also in the comments um how am i supposed to prove that i've deleted an email exactly uh yeah so i don't know I haven't heard any more about that the car has been released we've got it home so that's really good news like i said to you before we're not gonna have to worry about that anymore because we are not using them from now on well guys it is friday it's been a really really busy week as usual really um i hope you've enjoyed this week's videos guys like and subscribe as I always say and until another one have a great weekend and we will see you then. Cheers. Mm -hmm.